These guys have an amazing architecture because you have you serve basically around the world. Yeah. Yeah. So you make use of nine of no, no, seven of our regions. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think six or seven regions. Yeah. So uh, you have to talk a bit about your your architecture. So you push out. So you and your biggest challenge is you have a a hard deadline on the hundred milliseconds yeah. for bidding on um, on ads. On every basically. impression. Yeah. So you also use Lambda now in your architecture. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. tell us a bit about that. The original way of this infrastructure working and still it works like this in a, in a larger, to a large extent is a, was using S3 as a, as a message uh, bus basically instead of Kinesis. And at the rate that we're going right now, we upload roughly 600,000 files on S3 every single day, about 17 million files per month. And the buckets grow really, really fast and very, very quickly. Have, we have, I think, uh, at the moment, we have seven petabytes of data inside, inside S3. And the problem is that if you start to try to list uh, one month worth of event, that 17 million files takes forever, uh, if it finishes at some, at some sometimes. And I know the team is, is working hard on that, but of course we need to improve. And Lambda was uh, the perfect way for us to, instead of uh, listing and pulling for new files, which is not an efficient way to run a real-time infrastructure anyway, we just started to use uh, Lambda so that as soon as a file was added, it was immediately routed to one of the 10 different customers that we have for, for these log files, from machine learning to uh, our data replication infrastructure to our other type of machine learning modeling or our product recommendations and, and so forth, or reporting, okay. for example. So, um, so we already talked, use, um, use these two, use S3, use Lambda, use, use Kinesis, use DynamoDB, yeah. any other services you're using? Oh, we use a lot of the other stuff. We use uh, ELBs, uh, we use, uh, of course, Autoscaling Group. Most of our uh, infrastructure is, uh, is behind ELBs and Autoscaled, and we make a, a point all the time to generate, uh, to have an infrastructure that is mostly stateless, and we utilize all of the different Amazon services or things that we build in-house, so that communication happens asynchronous, asynchronously between the different machines. This way, if a node goes down, uh, we don't need to worry about, and our entire infrastructure can scale up and down with the traffic uh, that is hitting the different regions. We actually save, uh, on our AWS bill, we did a calculation when we turned on uh, autoscaling groups, we save $2 million a year just using autoscaling groups uh, in our infrastructure. So what was the hardest piece in building your system? Oh, it's still happening that uh, our all, um, there's, a, there's a lot of actually complex areas uh, that we're still building. Certainly, one of the hardest components that we've been fighting is uh, allocating budgets globally. Uh, it tends to be a very complicated problem when you're dealing with budgets uh, of uh, small and medium businesses that, that might spend $25 a week. And uh, if I have uh, a thousand bidders out there, then this means that this $25 need to be spent across these 25 bidders, so I would split it a thousand times. And it becomes really tiny, and it's a week, so I need to divide it by seven. And then I need to know uh, by hour, so I divide it again by 24. And you start with uh, maybe $700 a week, and you end up with two cents per machine. And it's actually massively uh, traumatic for the system to do this. And so we've been working really hard for the past year, actually, to make sure that this, uh, this budget object could be shared globally across the different instances. And Kinesis is a massive central component of okay. uh, this new infrastructure. Because of the low latency of communicating globally from the different components, all of the instances, no matter where they are in the world, within just a few fractions of a second, they actually know how much budget is left globally. And it actually improved the uh, ability for these machines to bid by actually fivefold. So, so the budgets are really updated atomically, or is it sort of a statistical, more or less fuzzy kind it's of almost? Eventually, eventually, eventually. consistent. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it is a challenging problem. Yeah. At 60, 60 billion impressions a day, if you, are, uh, if you just uh, are wrong 1% of the time, you're wrong 600 million times. And that's about $1.2 million a day of being wrong on yeah, average. That's that's not a, a good plan. No, <laughs> that's certainly not. So we already talked about all the different services that, you, that we have. What's, the, what's on your wish list for AWS? Oh, uh, there's a long, uh, <laughs> long uh, I guess uh, the, the uh, more uh, down to earth me would like uh, Postgres on Aurora. Uh, OK. That would be that would be amazing to have the that dialect to be understood. So that's one. 
But the real, I think right so now... So you're using, are you using RDS Postgres now? Or are you yeah, we're using RDS Postgres. Yeah, okay. Um, and the, the one that would be really, a, I think, a game changer for a lot of companies would be a newer version of CloudWatch that, that does uh, anomaly detection and uh, uh, understands when your infrastructure is, uh, is misbehaving and when you're generating 300,000 metrics per second, it's actually able to tell you these five nodes are operating in an anomaly right now and you, they should be retired. So that's not necessarily the, the CloudWatch side of thing. I mean, CloudWatch is just the infrastructure for moving the events and moving the information, but what you're saying is sort of intelligent alarming. That's correct. On, on not just on absolute numbers, but sort of on, on, on leading edges. On and general that, trends that, that, that are seen yeah, in, more in more the trending, infrastructure. Okay, so a better alarming infrastructure or better event and analytics yeah. infrastructure. So given that you are uh, one of the um, the hot guys in Python, yeah. yeah, I guess Python is on your wish list for, for Lambda? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, always. So how much of your infrastructure is written in Python? Uh, more than half of our infrastructure. We have more than a few hundred thousand lines of code in Python and uh, the remaining is Erlang and Java, but Python is used by the vast majority of our engineers. And we also sometimes tend to write things that you wouldn't expect in Python just because we want to try and see what would go like a, a massive uh, data warehouse in memory data warehouse. People typically don't think of Python as the data processing language, but uh, sure. if you stretch it. Okay. <laughs> great. Thank you, Valentino, for yeah, being a great community member. Thank you for helping us out here and having a good year. Thanks.